All right, so episode, oh god, 16? 16 or 17, one of the two. Uh, let's go check real quick. I think 16, because the last one was a bonus round. Oh, yeah, 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 you're right, that's true. Do, 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 bonus round, yeah, 16, episode 16. Hey, hey, welcome <laughs> to episode 16, everybody. It's Game Punks, we're back after, like, a two-week hiatus, almost. Two-week delay! Uh, we had we, we got Toronto. busy with shit. Yeah. yeah, some of us went to Toronto. Some of us uh, had a child. Um, uh, those two things are not equivalent. <laughs> One of them was definitely uh, a lot more laborious uh, yeah, than the other. Crazy this time of year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's really rough out there in Toronto. It, it's so rough with their it's practically beautiful weather and no cold oh god it was so nice like i barely had to wear any warm clothes yeah. while i was well, there well it's been pretty warm in montreal recently too um, i i wouldn't know i wasn't here <laughs> yeah, i was in toronto yeah i haven't really left the house or put on real clothes in like two weeks so <laughs> been wearing the same adidas like sleeper shorts ah well <laughs> you know some else some else <laughs> no one can call you stinky if you're the only one who can smell you oh there we go mm. Now I've been showering daily because a okay. <laughs> I wanted to post this, but I, I like think I fell asleep before. Uh. Um, but I, I wanted to be like, get used hey, to that. Y- y- you know what school doesn't get you ready for besides taxes and the crushing weight of reality? What an infant shitting in your bare hand as you're changing its diaper. Yeah, the hand that you uh... eat with, <laughs> covered in poo. And it also doesn't uh, prepare you for the um, dealing with the emotional trauma that comes with that. Um, <laughs> yeah. It has happened twice. I am... S- like, if I don't think about it, I'm okay. And it's but fine. you think back and to I can it. Continue. And... But, like, if I'm eating and I think about it, I need to, like, stop eating for a bit. Go wash my hands. Even though they're clean. It's fine. Mm. It, but, like, I can just feel the... The stain of filth. Jesus Christ. And it'll never be gone. Uh, it'll, no. I'm, oh. It's, it's going to haunt me for the rest of my days. <laughs> they can call you Stink Fist. <laughs> <laughs> I love oh Tool. Wow. That's like a, it's like a platinum game weapon. It the is. Stink Fist. The Stink Fist. It's going to be an astral chain. Oh my god. Well, ho- hopefully, hopefully, your mind will just, like, compartmentalize that and store it away where you'll never have to think about oh, it ever God. again. Hopefully, but I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> the think, memory, it that, remains. It's, like, up there with, um, I have this weird thing, too, because I read a tweet at one point that was just, like, technically your bones are always kind of wet, and it just, it makes me so uncomfortable. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, what the fuck? I don't like that. I, yeah, see? Ah, oh, Jesus Christ. That just makes me think of, like, my bones being, like, a like a rib bone or eating fucking ribs. Yeah. Ah, uh, that's well, really... That's pretty much exactly what it is. It's just, it's not fun to think about, you know? No, that's a terrible fucking thought. Holy crap, I hate that. I hate it so much. So nasty. <sighs> Sorry about the phone in the background, if anybody can oh, hear that. Okay. It might be cutting out when I do my uh, noise reduction, but, uh... Yeah. I hate that my telephone is really fucking loud. Um, so, uh, you had quite a bit of a week. Why don't yeah. you Why don't you start us off? <laughs> All right. So, aside from the child things, which I will not, besides the shitting in my hand, I don't really want to dive into too much. Um, yeah, uh, understandably. Just not a lot of sleep, but uh, a little game called uh, Devil May Cry Five came out. And, and it's a game that you are is, anticipating uh, so hotly. So, so very hotly. So, so hotly that you totally just forgot you had a child for like five minutes as you played it. Five minutes. Every every time I boot it up, it's just like, what baby? <laughs> ba- the baby. baby. The baby. The, the, the baby. What baby? The baby. What baby? The baby. <laughs> um, yes. Uh, so before I go into that, I want to talk briefly about Bravely Default and how I feel that it shit itself a little bit. Oh, okay, uh, okay. The whole time travel uh, thing. Yeah, all right. Um, 
So I got to the part where you're like, Alternus is ring a bell, kind of. Looks like him, probably he, is. He, Don't he know is ring a bell. Yeah. He um, is. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I got to that part and was like, I'm fucking in. And then you wake up in the inn and then you get out of the inn and you're like, all right, this is weird. Time travel. Go back to the chasm. Okay, that's cool. Go get everyone. Get out. The map is just covered in exclamation points. And I was like, Ugh. oh, I'm going <laughs> to I'm going to put it down for a second. I need a break. Okay. I just, like, I I do have plans of going back to it and finishing it. It's just, I I burnt myself out, I think, on that game a little bit. That's fair. Well, there's, right now, what you're going to experience is a lot of repetition. Yeah, well, that's the thing. I I saw it, and I was like... "Mm, It's going to feel a little like grinding. Yeah. But, firstly, what it is actually good for is grinding. Uh, (laughs) Because it's kind of like doing a boss rush to level up. But it's also totally optional. Yeah, that's so what I was thinking too. You but... don't have to. You don't have to do any or all of it. But you, sh- what you should do maybe is do a few of them. Do the few of the ones that you want to do, like the fun boss fights. Yeah. Uh, but the only ones that are that are not optional are the the four ones at the tower, like the four uh, yeah, 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 of course, fiend the bosses. Crystals, yeah, yeah. And those are pretty easy boss fights for the most part because they have like one gimmick. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like once you know it it's pretty much a breeze exactly the gimmick down so you just have to deal with those which are not so bad um but those are the only ones that are not optional essentially the mm-hmm. the rest of them are like oh okay mm-hmm. so you can if you want to go back and if you want to fight any of those bosses you can yeah i've um, got that weird thing though where it's like i need to do all the things i need it uh, you have to. Here, let me just say, you're gonna be doing this repetition thing a couple of times. Oh god! So it. don't feel compelled to do all okay. the bosses. Just well, don't don't case... do that. Don't do that to yourself. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Love yourself, Ben. Love yourself, and don't do it. <laughs> all right. Well, in that case, I might just go do the towers then. Uh, yeah, that's but... that's what you should do. And then, yeah. if you want to do a little bit of grinding, fight a boss or two, you'll get some big XPs. Yeah. Yeah, so I dropped that for, like, the time being, but now knowing that, I might pick it back up sooner yeah. than expected. Uh, Don't worry about it. I jumped over to SMT4. Uh, that's pretty fun so far. Yes, um, okay, so how, like how have the, you been uh, enjoying that? I like the charming the demons mechanic. It's really fun. Yes, um, I... That's my favorite thing about the traditional SMTs. Is this the first yeah. or- kind of original SMT you've ever played? Oh, yeah, this is the first SMT that is not a Persona game that I have ever touched. Uh, okay. I, like, I don't even know anything about SMT uh, besides, like, a couple of the titles in the series. And so you'll, has, like, you'll recognize spin-offs. pretty much all the demons. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. Uh, uh, without question. But, yeah. um... Yeah, so what do you, what do you think of the battle system? It kind of kind of plays like a traditional rpg battle system yeah it's got a it's got the kind of persona you feel to it where you get bonus attacks when you find their weakness Um, yeah when you exploit an enemy's weakness you get a double attack Uh, i find it very fun uh the the i don't know how it is in the other games but i like that it's a uh wrist uh, uh, technically basically an eye watch with a bunch of apps that's kind of what it's like in some of the other ones not all the time but yeah. in the more recent ones, like in Strange Journey, you've got like a suit that has that function. Mm. There's like a whole bunch of like little things like that that are kind of similar across the newer ones. But you, sometimes it's like, oh, here's like your, you have like a device. Mm-hmm. Maybe it's like a little laptop or something. But yeah, now it's yeah. basically just like an iWatch. Well, the mobile one is just like, hey, your phone is the thing now. And I was like, all right, that's a pretty cool gimmick, though. Yeah, it, it works. SMT, like mobile game. I'm in. So I've been playing that too on my phone a bit, but like I don't That's fun. play phone game much. It's just like when I'm on the metro or whatever, I'm like, yeah, I'll kill a demon. Let's go get yeah. that bayonetta. There you go. Um so yeah, that's that. Uh in terms of mobile games, I am uh eagerly awaiting to get uh Kirby's Epic or Yarn or more more epic yarn. Epicest yarn. Is that what it's called? Uh Is it the is it the remake of Kirby's Epic Yarn? Yeah. The one that's um, coming uh, out on 3DS? Yeah. Yeah, Kirby's I've heard about that. More? Yeah, it's Kirby's More Epic Yarn, I think. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's... Kirby's Extra Epic Yarn. Extra Epic, so, uh, oh. Yeah, that implies more uh, more things have been shoved into there, so I'm... 
That sounds and fun because that's a Kirby game I never got to play. Yeah, me either. Well, the only thing I know about it is, of course, the visuals are like, oh, cute. So cute. And also that it doesn't have like copying abilities in the traditional sense. No, nah, you just pick up things and slam them with a... Yeah, which is cool. Like you turn it... Yeah, it's all right. It seems like a uh... cathartic kind of mechanic to use. Yeah. Uh... And Kirby games are not known for their extreme difficulty, except for like some ones, like in like Superstar, maybe. Yeah, but it, mostly it they're pretty the bre- they're pretty breezy, fun little relaxing games. That's what I play so them. Fun. I play them as just like, oh, my mental health is getting better playing this game. Mm-hmm. Uh, so yeah, that's those are pretty fun uh, titles. They're good. Uh, so yeah, back to the main event. <laughs> yes, Dimka Five. Devil May Cry. Um, very fucking good. <laughs> expectations continually exceeded that's um, that's good to hear i i was talking to a friend about it and he was like i don't know if i should get resident evil 2 remake or devil may cry 5 and i was like honestly at this point no idea which one to recommend you and last night i hit a point where i was like devil may cry 5 yes yeah. Just, yeah. just go just do it okay just things that um the friend in question needs to see and would be super hype about uh Mm. and like i said before we started recording uh i feel kind of um not bad but just kind of bummed that i'm not streaming it right now uh yeah the internet's not great here uh because there are moments of just the hypest craziest bullshit happening and like (laughs) that reaction is just going to be gone from, yeah. Uh, for from next streams or from when I do stream it, because I will. I mean, I I need to. Mm-hmm. I gotta do it. Um, v is probably the weirdest character I've ever played in a video game. Okay, so how does V play? Uh, you have three stands at your disposal. Okay. And you use them, and you just kind of hang back. Uh, V's the only one who can kill them, though. Uh, okay. The, the shadow... Uh, is it Raven? I think it's Raven. Uh, shadow, Raven, and Nightmare kind of just do uh, damage until they are, like... ready to be killed and then uh, he has okay. to go in with his cane and actually kill them because mm. uh, they can't finish them off um he plays really fun it took me like the first mission i was playing him super wrong and just being super close to the enemy so i'd always get hit i had mm-hmm. no idea what was going on and i was like i don't understand how i'm supposed to play it um uh, but it it's actually just like hang back, do your combos with them, hit the taunt button, get your style to fucking triple S. Uh, super easy to style really hard with V. The move list with V is super fun too because, again, you've got. Uh, it's not Raven. Who is it? V's pet's names. Uh, anyway. Uh, yeah, he can summon nightmare which is pretty sick and you got a move list for nightmare uh, okay that you unlock by getting a uh a skill called promotion where you get to jump on nightmare's back and kind of just ride him <laughs> like a fucking titan uh that's fucking awesome it's super sick uh shadow is of course the jaguar from uh the first game yeah the like jaguar shadow thing that is just a common enemy but has like a move set of ridiculous crazy bullshit that's really Uh, fucking cool and uh fuck i know it's not raven what is it dmc these shadow uh anyway i guess it doesn't really matter that much but um I'll just call him Raven for now. Uh, he's basically V's guns because V doesn't have weapons. He just has his cane. Uh, and you get a bunch of cool abilities with uh, the Raven thing too. Uh, v is a edgy goth fucking loser who just That's reads poetry all the time. Um, he's got a 
an S rank taunt that is just him being like, uh, your symphony is over, and then just uh, Flight of the Valkyrie starts playing. Oh, as he ducks with his cane. Holy fuck! It's <laughs> fucking great. Um, That's insanity. Yeah, it's it's super sick. Uh, Nero plays like Nero. Uh, it's fun. His devil breakers are crazy. You got a bunch of variety, and some of them do some crazy ass shit. Uh, <laughs> one of them is literally just the world, though. God damn. It's fucking sick. It's so good. And I got the Mega Man Buster, which is really fun <laughs> to use, actually, because it, like, changes his slide animation. So he's just sliding around like like the Blue Bomber. And uh, <laughs> it shoots really fast, actually, um, and does quite a bit of damage. I was surprised. I thought it was going to be one of those gimmicky ones that's just like, haha, here's the okay, toss it, don't use it ever again. But that's it's rad. got its uh, it's got some function. Um I think my favorite so far is Ragtime, uh, which is the Zawoldo one. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, it just kind of freezes enemies, and then you super style on them. Or uh, Punchline, which is uh, basically just a rocket fist that will continue your combo if you hit the enemy too far away, or if there's if you want to like stun an enemy that's coming to hit you, you lock onto him, use the fist, get him like stunned style on another enemy like the the fucking possibilities are insane that's uh, fucking I have cool not touched dante yet okay uh, because i'm just i'm not that far in yet i'm on mission eight i think of like 18 19 mm-hmm. um so i haven't touched dante yet um but i've heard his move list is ridiculously huge yeah uh, just nuts another thing is uh, there are 19 bosses, mm-hmm. which is how many levels there are, like missions. Yeah. Which means there's a boss fight at the end of every mission, which is great because the other entries, sometimes you just have like a mission that was like, oh, you go through the door and it's mission over after you cleared a room or whatever. Like yeah. Some missions in the older games were just very throwaway <laughs> missions that mm-hmm. weren't satisfying, I guess. Uh, but this is just balls to the wall nonstop. Fucking oh, it's it's just so good. Utter and, madness. And, yeah, it's ridiculous. I can't wait to play more. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm on mission eight. I've done eight bosses. The skill trees are fucking rad. <laughs> I just, I, I, expectations exceeded. Uh, there's a there's a fun little uh, bit. At the beginning of the game, this is like the history of Devil May Cry, which kind of catches you up on everything. Okay, that's and, cool. So, like, uh, if you're a explains, total noob, it's it'll help yeah, you yeah, out. It, it explains the story a bit, and it's just very funny because there's uh, it it like of course the anime and uh, two are canon, like Devil yeah. May Cry two, uh, but it's super funny because the anime gets like maybe 15 seconds of screen time with a little <laughs> explanation and then devil may cry 2 is just like and then uh dante went over here and did some stuff and we're on to devil may cry 4 let's go here we yeah. go <laughs> just get it out of here don't talk about it and no word is made of dmc no 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 no, no word is made of it but uh dante gets a, a nice little cowboy hat and gets to do a little dance which if you know uh the team ninja press conference i believe was like this is devil may cry this is not devil may cry and it was like a picture of uh from um fuck what's the cowboy movie uh Brokeback mountain yeah it was a picture of Brokeback mountain oh versus, my god like, a biker dude or whatever so capcom is just leaning super hard into being like no dante is a gay cowboy good what now good uh, it's pretty great that makes me happy um, and yeah that's that all right well that ain't uh, so bad yeah that's uh that sounds like pretty fucking good actually it's, i'm, fu- it's I'm fucking into that shit i'm so sad that it will probably never go onto the switch so yeah that's a pity I mean, you I know whatever it's fine we'll get astral chain and uh scale bound and well, possibly ast- well astral a- chain is good that uh, yes that's true scale bound fuck yeah uh, but that's still i think that's still just rumors uh but also camille this morning retweeted a uh i guess this falls kind of into news but we can just get it out of the way camille sure. this morning retweeted a tweet being like please please platinum port the wonderful 101 to the switch 
and they were just, just like he just smiley it. he just retweeted it and i was like oh, oh please, bitch please 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 do this because the the wii u had so many good games that i'll just never play because yeah why would i get a wii u yeah that would be kind of silly yeah um but but that's yeah, fucking anyway, awesome that's my week um for now <laughs> <laughs> uh that's quite the week and that's quite the game i have to say it is great the soundtrack is amazing the dynamic like flow of getting your s rank and mm-hmm. hearing the music ramp up from just the enemy encounter to like getting really fucking good at it Ugh, it's it, ugh, it's so good that sounds pretty awesome Mm-hmm. I, I actually, the one thing that I liked about DMC is the Combi Christ soundtrack, which was really good. Mm-hmm. The, they they did a really good job with the soundtrack for that game, uh, but the, everything else about it is just kind of like, hmm. Mm, <laughs> what was it? Oh, God. Someone shared a video clip of one of the boss fights from DMC Devil May Cry that is just like a weird pussy demon thing and Dante's just like fuck you and then the demon's like fuck you and then Dante's like fuck you and then the demon's like fuck you and throws up everywhere and it's like wow that's good very that's, engaging yeah very very devil may cry <laughs> uh okay well my week was oh, wait sorry i just want to talk about nico real quick oh, too sure she's sure. great she is the best addition she is just an insane human who drives a van like an idiot and could die at any second but somehow doesn't it's she's the best her van is it. basically just a devil hunter uh she is my favorite character so far that's uh, fucking cool actually probably of like any new character that has ever like been introduced i think nico is the hardest i've ever been like okay you're in you're like you're my favorite that's just fuck, that's, that's cool <laughs> yeah anyway now i'm done oh okay <laughs> uh hmm i had so I, I went to toronto to visit my partner and that was really really fun ah uh, yes man. uh <laughs> what did we do we did a lot of shit um he had to go to university for a lot of the week so there were a lot of the days we kind of went to school first and then we did shit afterwards Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, on Monday, we just kind of, we hung around the house after school, because he had school pretty much all day. But then, after that, we went on Tuesday, we went downtown, and uh, we explored a little bit. And um, so there's this store that you can find in a couple of locations around Toronto called BMV. And BMV is a secondhand bookstore that hmm. i believe gets their stock from like book store warehouses as opposed to second hand from people okay so yeah. everything that they sell is is brand new like it's it's brand new it's not used it's in really good condition and it's sold at about three quarters of the price of what you can find in regular retail so whenever i go to toronto i always make an effort to go and check out all the bmvs and buy cheap comic books and that is exactly what i did so I picked up three uh, new comics for myself. I picked up the uh, issue. Well, it's like the trade paperback edition of Superman and the uh, Ju- new Superman and the Justice League of China, which is a really, really great uh, Superman book that Gene Yang was writing for a while uh, mm-hmm. about a Chinese boy who's given powers, given essentially the powers of Superman by a department of the Chinese government uh, in order to for them to kind of make their own bootleg Justice League. But um, his, uh, like, I guess his headstrong personality and shit like that makes him pretty un-Superman-like in almost every way. Like, he's kind of a bully, kind of a bit of a dickhole. Uh, and he doesn't, at first, get along with his two partners, the Batman and Wonder Woman of China, who are both really great characters in their own right. But the book is just, like, a really fantastic and interesting superhero story. Uh, there's a lot of great, kind of fun stuff that they do with like the mythology of these characters Mm -hmm. and uh, the way in which they incorporate them into like the dc universe is great the individual stories that these uh books tell are really really good so it's kind of like the end last story in the series so i picked that up i also got a collected trade edition of uh the dc superpowers series by jack kirby 
So this is a comic that was published in like the 1980s to coincide with a toy line from Kenner called the Superpowers Toys, and they're like these, you know, uh, they're kind of like the star, the original Star Wars toys, um, but they're superheroes. They're all DC superheroes, and they published a comic to go alongside it. But they oh, didn't okay, just yeah. publish like a comic; they created like an excuse a for Jack. Uh, they created an excuse for Jack Kirby to write every DC character. So it's okay. just literally the greatest comic book artist slash writer of all time writing stories featuring like every Justice League member, every villain. Uh, there's like an overarching plot about Darkseid kind of manipulating all the events from the background. And that's, of course, like Darkseid is his character and he's using mm-hmm. the New Gods mythology and fusing that with like the mythology of the Justice League. And it's he's pitting them against each other. And it's just really, really cool to see him draw like Batman and all like these characters that you never really got to see him do too much art of. Uh, and then putting them with like his all of his original DC characters and teaming them up and it's just a fun really fun book so I got this big trade paperback of that it collects the whole series everything that he ever did with that little Damn. side thing it's really great and then I picked up um, a book called um, no it's by it's it's a Shazam comic and it's mm-hmm. by Jeff Smith who's the creator of Bone I don't know if you're familiar with Bone uh i believe so it's like a fantasy comic uh that was really popular in like the late 90s early 2000s basically about a bunch of like comic strip characters who are who are like forced to oh yes yeah it's kind it's kind of like tolkien meets like pearls before swine or something like that yeah yeah. where it's my dad uh my dad really loved this actually it's a fantastic comic it's really 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 well written that artist did a shazam comic for dc and i found a beautiful edition of it so i picked that up it was like nine bucks uh but a fucking awesome comic which is beautiful artwork uh very cartoony uh perfectly suits the shazam character in his mythology uh i think he draws like the coolest looking dr savannah uh and i like the villains just have these great designs they almost look like mother characters uh i just if there was ever an artist actually like an american comic book artist who could draw like an earthbound or a mother comic i'd give it to jeff smith uh because the dude is fucking awesome he's written a bunch of other comics too he wrote this one called rassel which is about like a dimension hopping art thief that one's really really good uh but he's just like a fantastic artist so i picked up a whole bunch of those awesome comics i also picked up a really, really, really stellar little batch of GameCube games at ANC Games, which is a store on Spadina. Uh, it's pretty easy to get to. It's like right at the top of Chinatown. Uh, you just take a streetcar from either St. George or um, Spadina stations, and you're there in like within five minutes. Uh, nice. But it is a retro game store. I've gone there almost every year since I started uh, seeing my partner. Um, But So that's like about five years now I've been going there. But I've picked up a bunch of shit there. I've really built my GameCube collection up since shopping there. Like I got Tales of Symphonia and I got RE2, RE4, and now I have RE0, which I purchased. Uh, And then I got like a whole bunch of other shit there. But I I also picked up Killer7. Yeah! Uh, Now I've never played Killer7, but its reputation obviously precedes it. So I'm excited to see what I've got. All I know that I'm in for is I'm in for a fucking insane Suda 51 rail shooter. Oh boy, are you ever. And, and rail that's shooter it. is uh no. No. <laughs> it's uh, you, It doesn't see. even describe it. Yeah, I don't cuz I don't know how much you know about it either and I don't want to I I I know the I know weirdness. almost nothing except for the premise and who made it. Okay. So here, that's here. all I really needed, quite honestly. Will, we can talk more when you come back next week or whenever you touch it. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> just have a good time, my friend. Mm, I, am, <laughs> I really love that I'm game. Excited. It is so fucking weird. Yes. Um, that game is nuts. It Yeah. It's absolutely fucking nuts. That's all I know about it. And that's all I need to know about it for now. But... Suffice it to say, I'm very excited. <laughs> it might be the next thing I, I I sit down and play with a friend, because uh, it seems like a fun one to to enjoy with a buddy next to you. 
So I'm going I'm going to have to try that shit out, but I'm excited. It's I've really started getting some interesting and rare games since I got there. Just maybe a little aside, some of the games I've gotten in my time there Geist uh which is like a fantastic and underrated first party Nintendo FPS game uh for the GameCube where you play as a guy who's kind of turned into like a phantom and you can project this phantom around and possess people. I think my dad, yeah, my dad got me this. Uh, I was very confused by it. It's a really weird game. It's an uh, extremely I, underrated I played, title. Like, yeah, I only played a bit, but it and is And it has a really great deathmatch multiplayer. Shooter. Yeah. Really, really great multiplayer uh, game. I remember the story being, like, fucking wild, too. It's totally Time travel. Nuts. Time yeah, travel, I believe. Time travel and, like, astral projection and a whole bunch of really fucking insane concepts. It's, yeah, like, just... it's exactly what, like, a Japanese person thinks an American first-person shooter is supposed to be like. Mm-hmm. Except it's anything but. Like, it's 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 totally infused it's with these the weirdo... It's the least American-American thing. Yeah, exactly. It's this totally weirdo game, and it's really interesting. And it's also extremely cheap at retail price. It, like, if you can get it secondhand, it's usually in good condition. Mine was, like, mint condition with the manual and everything. Zero scratches on the disc, zero notches on the box. Like, mm-hmm. almost like it was brand new. And it cost me $9. Nine fucking dollars. So, really God good damn. deal. Uh, I've also gotten the two Beautiful Joes in my time going there. Oh, yeah. So I have Beautiful Joe 1 and 2. I'm still That's making my way through Beautiful Joe 1. But those games are great. Mm-hmm. Yeah, those that is some platinum ass shit, actually. Uh, and they're totally up my alley because they're like common rider type Sentai yeah, yeah. crap. So it's like, oh, I, yes, I will play well, the I mean, fuck out of that. That's why. That's why I'm stoked for the wonderful 101. If it does get ported, it's just because it's like, do you like the silly Sentai shit? There you go. Uh-huh. It's platinum Sentai. What do you? Huh? Well, yeah, it's like Tokusatsu well. type shit, basically. Yeah, it plays like Toku stuff. So I'm totally into it. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, that's just like, hmm. Hmm. Mm. <laughs> uh, but I've gotten a whole bunch of really fun uh, games since I got there. And yeah, of course, Tales of Symphonia, which is just one of my favorite RPGs of all time that I never had a chance to own. So I have like the original version of it on GameCube now, which is great. Uh, and the GameCube has very few RPGs. I also got Bait and Kaitos there too which is a very underrated gamecube rpg that's like extremely fucking weird and cool it's got like a card based battle system called the magus system where you combine different cards to form like different usable items and shit like that it's but unlike fucking uh chain of memories which kind of has a really broken card based rpg battle system uh because it blends it with action rpg this is a turn based rpg so it's a lot more calculated yeah, uh, but it's really, I, really fun, and it's got these I beautiful pre-rendered memories, backgrounds. Man. I hate playing that game. I, I'll really? be honest. I oh, like dude, Chain. I, of, I like it. Chain of Memories on Game Boy Advance. I think that's totally fine. Oh, yeah. But on PS2, fuck that shit. I can't. I play never it. played it on PS2. I only ever had it on Game Boy. So. Oh no, then on Game Boy it's fine. I'm talking about yeah. the PS2 like a re- Chain of Memories. Didn't mm-hmm. know it got re uh, reported. Yeah, oh yeah, Rechain of Memories, you can get on, like, all the Kingdom Hearts console collections. Oh. It's really not well, I good. I mean, I knew that, I just, I didn't... You never played oh. it. Yeah. It's very bad. Like, it plays well. extremely badly. And the card system is awful. You'd think that it would be super easy, just... L2-R2. They, they it's not... really... It's... <laughs> It, it, it's basically like the least versatile, most rigid and shitty battle system they ever put into the game. It's like the Kingdom Hearts game that plays the worst, without question. Jeez. It's it's really not good, because mixing that with like the hack and slash stuff is just like, oh, fuck that. Yeah. But Bait and Kaitos is, is quite the opposite. It's got like a very, very good card-based uh, battle system with like a lot of potential for like mixing powers, and you've got all these party members, and each one has like a deck. So... It's a really, really fun game. I enjoyed that one. And it's got these, I, I mentioned it before, these gorgeous pre-rendered backgrounds that are just totally beautiful. They're like RE1 levels of gorgeous. Uh, like the RE1 remake, which that game pushes the fucking GameCube to its limits yeah. uh, in terms of visuals. And that game still looks really good today. Uh, like even the HD version of that game arguably doesn't even look as good. Um, but um, it's fantastic. So I've really really enjoyed going to that store they have like 
a fantastic collection of weirdo shit. And then I also kind of poked around a few pawn shops. There's a store mm-hmm. called Buy and Sell Kings, which is on, um, I think it's on Main Street, which is, uh, it's pretty accessible from like Main Street Station. It's about a block down the street from it. But it's this, um, pawn shop. There's a couple of them around, uh, Toronto, there's one in Scarborough, which I, I go by when I'm on the bus going to the University of Toronto Scarborough campus. Uh, but the one that I went to is on Main Street, and they've got just like a whole bunch of really, really nice things for cheap prices. Like there was, uh, boxed new, like boxed brand new toys and games for a relatively good price. Nothing was scratched. Really, really, uh, just a fantastic, little pawn shop full of cool stuff like some of the examples like i saw the original blister packaged evangelion figures oh, uh really yeah like the, the ones from when the show started to air in north america yeah, yeah yeah yeah. um really really good condition like amazing and they had one of each ava like they had all of the characters so that was really really cool uh, they had a whole bunch of Marvel Legends figures completely mint in the box for like quarter of the price you can find them at retail. Um, like usually Marvel Legends figures are 28 to 30 bucks with tax. Uh, mm-hmm. you could get them there for like 20 bucks. It's pretty good. Yeah. Really, really good deal. And those figures, I don't know if you, you, you've seen them around, I'm sure. Oh yeah. My, but, uh, one of my friends actually has, uh quite a hefty collection he makes um fuck backgrounds for mm-hmm. them like like sets set up yeah 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 like dioramas shit. yeah yeah dioramas that's the word that's cool uh, he makes dioramas and shit and has just a bunch uh it's actually the uh the possible third person for the podcast oh boy well then there uh, we go he he would have a field day there if there's any figures he's missing uh there's a chance that you could probably find it there for a pretty good price like there's one mm-hmm. They had this fantastic Captain America figure that had the Cap Wolf head as an alternate head. That was really, really cool. And they had, like, a whole bunch of shit for just very, very good price points. So, uh, and yeah, a whole bunch of beautiful Transformers, both Generation 1, Beast Wars, and then blister packaged, like, relatively new ones from the maybe the last decade or so. Mm -hmm. Uh, I saw some Transformers Robots in Disguise 2001 toys. Which were really fucking cool, because that's the era of Transformers that I grew up in. Yeah, so yeah, there were some really beautiful Transformers figures there. Some that I had from when I was young. That was really, really neat. So, uh, and they had some Japanese figures, too. Uh, from, like, some of the Japanese-exclusive Transformers toy lines that never came over to North America. So they had a whole bunch of really cool shit there. Uh, and all of it for relatively reasonable prices. Which, that's the thing that surprised me the most. I'm like, oh, $30 for this beautiful Sentinel Prime figure? I'm very surprised that I, you know, haven't seen it at that price point anywhere else. Yeah. But, uh, really, really cool shit. So, Buy and Sell Kings. Very good pawn shop. Big recommendation. Uh, I also saw two movies while I was there. I'm not gonna go in t- too in-depth onto either of them. Because they're both... Not only are they both really, really good... But they're also just, like, the kind of things that are much better experienced if you just watch it yourself. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, first movie I saw was the Lego Movie 2. Um, oh, there's... shit, that's out? Yeah, <laughs> it's out. Not too much... T- uh, and uh, let, me, let me just say, WB did a fuck bad job of, like, marketing that film. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, nobody, yeah, nobody knows it was out. We talked about this. It's, it's a really good movie. It's hmm. really, really good. It's, um... Not only is it a totally worthy sequel to the first Lego movie, but if you look at the Lego movie, the Lego Batman movie, and the Lego movie 2 as kind of a trilogy, they also complete Batman's story arc, like Lego Batman's story arc, really, really nicely. Hmm. Um, and um, I think just the the general theme of the Lego movie 2 is kind of, the differences between the ways that boys and girls play versus the ways they're expected to play. Yeah. And, uh, the, it's entirety, entirely a commentary on gender. And not only is it like a genuinely good, well researched and like kind of woke movie in terms of it's what it has to say about gender, but it's actually probably one of the most impressive movies I've ever seen for children about the subject. Uh, specifically about gender roles and 
expectations that parents uh, and toy companies might impose on children. Uh, And almost in a sense, both Lego movies, like the Lego movie 1 and 2, are remarkable to me because they're movies that are ostensibly commercials for a product, but they don't do an amazing job at selling the product to you. They do a really good job at selling the idea of the product to you. Mm -hmm. Like, they don't sell the individual sets as if there's something like, this movie is an advertisement for this particular Lego set based on the Lego Movie 2. They do a great job, however, of selling you on the idea of Lego as, like, a toy that is, in like, just infinitely uh, accessible and possible for everybody to enjoy. Um, and so they're, they're interesting because they're almost antithetical movies when it comes to, like, the capitalist perspective on both of them, but they're also just, like, total... <laughs> you know marketing exercises at the same time yeah, 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 it's sure. it's really really a strange kind of medium that they hit but they do a, a fantastic job on <laughs> a commentary on capitalism please buy my toys that i made like i think a very distinct difference can be seen in like okay so there's a playmobil movie coming out called the playmobil movie oh, or playmobil the movie I and if you look at idea from yeah if you look at how playmobil the movie markets itself versus how the lego movie one and two market themselves <laughs> you really see the distinct difference in the the like i guess process by which the people thought of these scripts and how much thought was put into the lego movie versus how little was put into this playmobil movie coming out because yeah. one of them looks like a fucked commercial and the other one looks like a work that has some level of integrity to it uh and the work with the integrity is obviously the lego movie um so yeah uh, the lego movie 2 really fantastic fun story i'm not gonna say anything more about it but i do have to say i really enjoy that they made the antagonist of this film like in the first movie an esoteric concept more so than a character uh which is really really cool um like, the villain of the movie really is a purveying social idea, much more than it is an individual character. That's good. A lot so of it's really, really cool. Really do that anymore. Or, like, like ever. Exactly. I mean, it happens, but, like, but, rarely, I, I, I find. <laughs> I, I think so, too. Like, I mean, the villain of the first Lego movie is ostensibly rigidity. Like, being, mm. too, being too rigid, being uncreative or unwilling to change... Yeah, that's the villain of the first Lego movie. The villain of the second Le- the second Lego movie similarly is like a concept or an idea, and I think that that's really really inventive. Uh, they've done it twice now, and both times it's been an effective uh, like means of communicating both the themes of the film and the narrative. So, uh, like, congrats to them. They've really like kept that shit going. I really wish that pe- more people were watching this movie. It would be I'm fucking cool if they it. were. <laughs> yeah, you you should go and see that shit. It's really great. Um, uh, I'll be right back real quick. I gotta go pee. Absolutely. Do, do, do. Oh boy. <laughs> uh so yeah, the Lego movie 2 kicked fucking ass. Um uh, sick. The other movie that I saw was Captain Marvel. This obviously I'm not going to talk too intensely about specifically because of spoilers and I know that people yeah. are going to want to watch that movie. Yeah. Suffice I, it to I'm say, uh, looking forward to it. This is It's not a movie without growing pains. It's a little more 
noticeably flawed than some of the more recent Marvel movies. And it's got a lot more in common with movies like Iron Man or uh, Captain America the First Avenger or Doctor Strange than it does with something like Black Panther or Thor Ragnarok. Uh, so it's not as actively subversive as those other movies are. Mm-hmm. However, the way in which it actually plays around with the character's origins is subversive. Uh, the use of the, the the way it makes use of the characters it has is very very different and it's actually thematically a little similar to thor ragnarok uh in that uh maybe this is you know i'm not gonna say it i'm not gonna say it never mind because even that would be kind of a mild spoiler okay but um i guess i'll just talk about some of the stuff i love the movie the color grading of the movie is beautiful it's got a very 90s action movie feel to a lot of stuff there's a there's a scene that looks like fucking point break like it just looks like something straight out of point break uh like some really yeah some of the ways that these scenes are shot the color grading the angles uh the like the filmmaking techniques and cinematography employed is like Mm -hmm. directly referencing movies of the era in which the story takes place so 1995 uh which i think was like very intentional of course yeah absolutely it's there's there's parts of the movie that very intentionally echo movies from this period which is really cool um but the movie is also like a grand scale cosmic space opera um, it's got kind of a small set, small scale in terms of setting because it mostly mm-hmm. takes place on Earth and above Earth in space. However, you do see all these other planets, uh, and they do have those great kind of planet-wide city vistas that you get in Thor Ragnarok and Guardians of the Galaxy One. Um, and it's really wondrous, and uh, the costume design is some of the best in the series. Like the characters have a very unique individualistic look to all of them and they're all instantly memorable um and yeah like i said the way in which the characters origins are played around with are very interesting because i don't know how much you know about like miss marvel's origins in the comics but like carol danvers didn't become captain marvel until like pretty recently maybe within the last decade Mm -hmm. uh prior to that she was miss marvel for like everything yeah, that's and what I know her as mostly. Exactly. So Miss Marvel got her powers in an explosion that basically bonded her body with Kree DNA. The movie takes a very different approach to the same origin story, uh, and of course, uh, Carol herself is like Captain Marvel in it as opposed to Miss Marvel. But I have to say, uh, I'm just very impressed with what they were able to pull off. Like, it's a movie that seems like it's much grander in scale, despite having kind of a smaller scope of setting. Mm -hmm. And um, the characters are all fantastic. They serve their purpose within the narrative uh, very, like, well, while also at the same time not feeling like they're just chess pieces being set up to enact like the next move within the narrative too so everybody fulfills the role without kind of breaking the verisimilitude of the story and um just it's a very very engaging action movie it's spectacular the visuals are really really next level shit like some of them are just like people audibly gasping and I saw I saw it opening weekend, so I saw it this basically the Saturday of the week it came out. So it's yeah. still it's still pretty fairly new, and the audience that I saw it with probably couldn't have been better because the theater was fucking packed. Like when we were pre buying our tickets, almost all of the seats were taken. Thankfully, we got three next to each other, so me and Oof. my two friends could be sitting next to each other as we watch the yeah. movie. That's always the the worst on a release date. It's just like yeah. oh boy, I sure hope. Uh so hope we can sit together yeah uh but yeah we got really good seats in the end we were right at the top row so we had a great view of the screen nobody in front of us uh and we saw it in 2d which was also nice um and yeah just the audience fucking went nuts for the movie they ate it up like everybody was clapping i heard crying i heard audible gasps of excitement and wonder like it was just it was a fantastic and great audience to see a movie with um and everybody there like clapped at everything there's two little there's a stanley cameo in the movie but there's also a tribute to him right at the beginning uh both of them i heard people sob 
like mm. when they saw it and i couldn't help but shed a tear or two as well it was yeah. really really beautiful and just very nicely executed well done and kind of and like is the, it in the hmm? sorry is it in the vein that kind of the they did with the uh, princess leia shit in the uh, newest star wars mm, no it's a little it's a little more visual than that okay uh although they do of course have like a little blurb at the end of it but mm. um i guess it's not really spoilers i'll just say outright what it is uh, they cut together all of his cameos from all across the MCU movies into the beginning of like the Marvel title crawl. Oh, so really? instead of all the different Marvel characters, it's all the different stands, and then it mm-hmm. says it says thank you, Stan, and it gives like his the date of birth, date of death. And it's really really sweet. It just made the whole audience like fucking sad, and mm-hmm. it was nice. And then there's the cameo in the movie. I won't spoil. Is fucking great, and it. Is direct reference to another movie which came out in 1995 that I am a huge fan of, and that Stan Lee is in. Um, so that's really, really like it's a movie that Stan himself cameoed in. It's probably the first movie he ever actually cameoed in, but it's a movie mm-hmm. from 1995, and it pays direct reference to that, whilst also being a beautiful last kind of Stan Lee cameo within the series. Uh, but all I have to say is what a like what an amazing and super duper fun uh marvel movie uh if this is like the first like female-led outing in the mcu like you couldn't have asked for a better introductory film they did a they did a really really good job and i'm very very happy with what they were able to pull off i'm stoked to go see this one yeah you're yeah and also uh just like a small little thing not a spoiler just like wow ben mendelsohn He's a great actor. I feel like Hollywood has has not given him a lot of roles in which he truly shines. Like, there are roles where he's great at playing kind of like somebody with like this... He's like a boilerplate slowly, slowly heating up until he spills over and loses his shit. Like, in Rogue One, he plays director Krennic, who's like the primary antagonist mm-hmm. of the film. And that's a really interesting role, but... He doesn't get to do a whole lot with it apart from kind of fume and be jealous and kind of upset at Tarkin for trying to kind of usurp his authority. And he also gets his ass choked out by Darth Vader. So, like, not a really... Not the best role for a guy who I think is an extremely accomplished and talented character actor. Um, But he plays Talos in this movie, who's, like, the leader of the Skrulls. And holy fuck is he amazing like a totally unprecedented amazing use of this actor so uh talos you're gonna have a a great time with he's really great uh and um one of maybe one of my favorite like marvel antagonists Mm -hmm. in terms of the movies he's definitely really really great i won't say any more talos kicks ass uh and the scroll and the scroll kick ass in this movie they're really really cool yeah the and, scroll. and uh you'll see what i mean when i say they really actively subvert captain marvel's origin story and kind of the mythology of some of these characters they do a, a fantastic job of it uh, and also you get little cameos from like other uh like kree characters that have appeared in the series previously like ronan the accuser is in this movie uh huh. like lee pace comes back to play him yeah, and uh, also Korath the Pursuer, played by Jaimon Hansu, who's also like the f- he's like the first guy in Guardians of the Galaxy who goes who. So he's <laughs> he's he's in it too, and he's part of the the Star Force military unit that Carol is a part of. Uh, so like, there's like these just these tiny little references to other Kree characters, and they have little cameos, and it's it's so good, it's really really fantastic. So uh, yeah. Uh, this movie kicks ass. Please go see it and have a great time. And once you see it, I want to talk spoilers with you about it because I have actually yeah, 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 yeah. I have a lot of shit to talk about with this movie. Uh, so but it's all spoiler related. Um, mm-hmm. so yeah, uh, Captain Marvel kicked ass, and I that was that was kind of my week. I also did one more thing, which is I got into RuPaul's Drag Race. Finally, oh, yeah. I saw I saw that tweet. Uh, which, um... Just, just ignore Rue and it's fine. That's what yeah, I'm honest, doing. Yeah, honestly, <laughs> just ignore RuPaul. Uh, she's only in, like, the 
first five minutes and the last five minutes of every episode and maybe a little bit yeah, in the exactly. middle but the rest of the queens it's... are really what the show is all about and it's basically just pro wrestling but instead of fighting they're stealing at each other and yeah. instead and I, I mean that instead of like physically fucking throwing each other over each other's shoulders although that does actually happen in the show there are some fucking fist fights uh, there are. but there is like Some there is like get tossed it's all the shit that i like about pro wrestling but it's all drag queens so i'm kind of into it also mm-hmm. the season that i'm watching which is the brand new season season 11 it's mostly queens of color which is like a problem that i also kind of had previously was that like i always felt the um the people of color on the show seem to kind of be playing second fiddle to like the white queens yeah and i the never really recent ones they uh yeah, they've started bringing back a lot more queens of color, and there's yeah. been like a big push on the like on the show's producers, I guess, to kind of make sure that everybody gets like equal representation. So mm-hmm. that's that's really cool. They've they've made an effort to improve the format and kind of the way in which the show is conducted, and it's uh, it's it's been a fun watch so far. Uh, I've really enjoyed it. I already have a couple queens who I'm like, mm, these bitches better fucking make it to the, like the last few episodes. Because yeah. they're really fucking good. Um, but uh, it's been an enjoyable watch so far, so I'm going to keep following it. And um, I really wasn't expecting to get into this show, even though it, like a lot of shit is in it is stuff that I would really like. Um, I just, I don't know. I was so opposed to like RuPaul's existence as a person mm-hmm. that I, I had a hard time ignoring her shit. Uh, yeah. But the show... Uh... Yeah. yeah i mean she she's the worst part of the show ironically she is she really truly is the worst part of the show she's even oh God, awful. i hate i hate when they're coming out near the end and like the super scripted like intros of like the shitty jokes and the fake yeah. ah, ha, ha, ha. it's just like fuck come on yeah we don't she, and, this and she can be funny like she she has some, yeah she has some good jokes but it's just like Man, I know all about what you do outside of the show. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know some of the transphobic shit that you've said, and you're an old ass man. Like, just fucking, you know, uh, like you, learn, learn, learn from your mistakes, bitch. Learn from your you mistakes. You better learn. But um, you know what? It's it's a pretty enjoyable show otherwise. So I've I've had a mm-hmm. a great good fucking time with that one. Uh, and uh, I'm gonna keep watching it weekly, so it's uh, maybe part of my new uh, my new JoJo RuPaul's Drag Race back to back Friday watch schedule. Oh yes, yeah. speaking <laughs> of JoJo, uh, we, we didn't get to talk about it because because uh, <coughs> the baby. Yes, <laughs> but uh, King Crimson is finally here. Yes, and uh, and it's it's not clear. It's still not clear. No, I don't. I do not fucking understand. How its powers work. I you could read <laughs> you could read the JoJo's wiki entry on it every and day. It still doesn't make sense. And it's just still like Araki managed to actually really write himself into a corner with like a power that just doesn't fucking make sense. Isn't there there's an interview where he's like, I don't know, dude. I don't know. Like if I if I just read the description uh of of how the shit works it, it doesn't oh, yeah jojo spoilers i guess warning <laughs> yeah okay so uh pardon skip ahead a couple minutes if you don't want to hear like jojo's bizarre minutes. adventure king crimson entry but <sighs> okay so abilities king crimson is one of the most powerful stands ever featured in the series but we don't know <laughs> yeah both physically strong and possessing the ability to erase time and predict the future, King Crimson boasts a status of an invincible stand against all users whose powers do not affect time. Only something that can affect time will defeat it. So it is a powerful stand that is able to punch through people's bodies, cleave them in a chop with, uh, with significant ease, and unlike other melee attacking stands that only uses single attacks that are almost always fatal rather than barrages of attacks, it can completely obliterate somebody's upper body in a single punch or throw a pair of scissors with such strength that they completely sever somebody's fucking arm or limb uh and among multiple other occasions where it just effortlessly severs and like rives body parts into fucking nothing mm-hmm. uh so it's a close uh, much like other close range stands its weaknesses are poor effective range and permanence so it's difficult for the user to hide their identity against multiple people but its fucking ability is so op that it doesn't matter yeah because it's 
signature ability is to erase time in a given frame lasting up to 10 seconds, starting from the instant the ability is activated. During this period of time, other people are unable to experience anything that has happened and retain no memories of it either. After the allotted time frame, they will suddenly find themselves in the situation they were supposed to be in afterwards. There is, however, one instance where a person is able to see their double before finding themselves in a future position. This is so fucking ridiculously Weird. overcomplicated it's so ridiculous i don't like how do you even write that you you don't because he didn't i feel it's... like what happened was he he was writing it forgot what happened and just kind of was like it had to do with time erasing yes maybe and, and that's just, he was like fuck <sighs> it i don't who cares and then that's not even to say anything about its secondary power it has a secondary mini stand kind of like how uh killer queen has two mini stands oh wait i don't know this one don't do it um i'm just gonna say it's called epitaph and it just rounds out this stand's powers to make it way too op it's it's fucking crazy uh it's absolutely fucking insane and it doesn't make sense. It doesn't well, fucking make sense. It will never make sense, probably. Ugh. Oh my god. Uh, but the way it's portrayed that... in the anime is really, really cool. Because they show the animation kind of glitch. As if it's hmm. corrupted. And it kind of like skips forward like it's been fast forwarded. And the music that plays during these scenes also kind of makes like a fast forwarding kind of sound. Uh, but it's yeah. it's really, really a, a super cool way of visualizing this utterly insane fucking power. Because mm-hmm. it's it's total madness. It's total fucking. They still madness. haven't hit the uh, the peak though of uh, the world though sound effect. Oh yeah, like it's, they did it, it the best they could. But I think I think the world is gonna hold a a pretty strong spot in terms of. Uh, I think the the only one sound design the only one that I think sounds better than the world is bites the dust where I think they really nailed the sound design of that power. Oh really? I like I like the world though better. I always think bites the but, dust. But I mean, is like, bites Ooh. the dust is really good too. But I think I think uh, the clocks of the world is really fucking like a unanimous sound effect that anyone can like. Yeah, that's that's true. Understand. That's true. It's a it's a super fucking cool um uh thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I, I'm fucking hyped into it. Yeah. But this is just, like, um... awesome. Uh... Oh, we're getting a new, we're getting a new, uh, OP next week, too. Oh, this shit! Week. I didn't even fucking... Because last week was, oh. a, last week was a recap episode, so... Yeah, yeah, it was... Theoretically... Any... Oh, I'm hyped. We get a new song. Is it gonna be Coda again? Who knows? I would oh, love God. if it's Coda again. I mean... I don't think... I, have they ever done two seasons... With the same... Two times in yeah, a row? Like no, movies. I don't think so. Yeah, Except no. for, I guess, I do Stan Proud and Sonichino Kyoku. Because Stan Proud and then Sonichino Kyoku has all of the different people on it. Yeah. 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 But, oh, uh, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see what happens. Uh, I'm excited. More I'm on really, this really excited. Next week. Uh, yeah. Um, holy fuck. Just like, mmm. Uh, I'm just extremely hyped for this shit. Uh, and I, I really can't wait to see what they're able to, like, accomplish with the rest of the story. Because I feel like part five is... Not only is it, like, the the part of JoJo that I'm, like, the least familiar with, but it's also, <laughs> like, one of the ones that I have the hardest time reading. Because it's kind of... I It's not that I think Araki's art is bad. It's not at all. It's It's great, in fact. It's just I personally have a hard time following part five's artwork. Like, the panel arrangement is a little difficult to understand for me. I don't think it's because it's yeah. actually badly done, mind you, because I know other people are totally able to manage. It's just like my brain doesn't process that panel arrangement as easily as some of the other series. Like, part six is mm-hmm. a lot easier to read, and so are part seven and eight. So it's just something about maybe some of the more esoteric and weird powers in this kind of being difficult to represent. It makes it a little easier watching it. 
but yeah well, i mean gold experience was weird the first time in the manga yeah it, it's um, kind of like w- wait what like you you don't really don't, get a good what, grasp of what it does no so uh a little yeah bit. <laughs> i'm i'm really happy that you know the monk the the anime is out and I've, I've really been enjoying it so far it's been a like the the stand that they fight after the train mm-hmm. that one there is just like fucking baby face is so ugh, uncomfortable what a weird and uncomfortable and difficult to portray stand power yeah. i just i i couldn't fucking do it you know it was hard yeah yeah no the manga panels are uh it turns into squares i don't understand what just like i don't it's a, i don't get it fam i don't get it it's a oh, it's fucking a rocky all right whatever next chapter let's go <laughs> yeah that that's just just like uh. <clears throat> uh, um kind of redonk i was thinking just like we can talk about oh <laughs> hold on i think my internet's crapping out oh you okay <laughs> Yeah, it's a little choppy, but we're not live, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, there we go. They're not going to hear it on uh, on recording, and I can hear you fine. Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Oh, okay. No, nah, you're choppy as all fucking hell. Oh, sorry <laughs> about that. That's okay. It's not your fault. It's I'm pretty sure it's this internet. My uh, voice connection is not doing good. It's bouncing around from green to red. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah. Uh. Um. I mean, I guess apart from that shit. Uh, uh, just some news. I, there's, there's been a lot of news. Uh, some of it yeah, we haven't... Yeah, let's blow through it with the most recent shit, I guess. Uh, I um, guess, uh, Reggie stepped down as president of, uh, Nintendo. Uh, of America. Which is pretty big, I think. Like, that to yeah. me, that to me is pretty major news, and I've, I've been hearing a lot of other podcasts talk about it. I don't really have too much to add or say about it, apart from the fact that, like, he's leaving on good he terms. Had a good run. Yeah, he had a great run. <laughs> yeah. he, he, he supported Nintendo of America in some of, like, the hardest times. He memed himself times. to all hell. <laughs> yeah, he had a good sense of humor about himself. And, uh, I uh, just, I wish him, I wish him luck. You know, like, I, it's, it's hard pressed to kind of feel anything for like a CEO of a company, but yeah, he he really put himself out there and he did he helps distinguish he helped distinguish Nintendo of America from other American companies in that everybody was like ah it's Reggie and they can meme Reggie whereas like other people mm-hmm. like Todd Howard or whoever get memed inadvertently he was like able yeah. to meme himself. Yeah, he he, he what was it? He came out. He's like, I'm here to kick ass and take names. Yeah, exactly. All right, you're in. And uh, that's my boy. Some of those Nintendo directs he did uh, for E3 were really, really fun. Like the one in which he fought uh, Iwata, and there is yeah. there is the other one where he um, my body he, like, is ready. Oh he, yeah, he my body is ready. Where he fucking laser visioned a guy for asking about Mother Three. Oh my god, yes. That that one uh, killed uh, me. What was it? He uh, what was it? He had one guy make fun of him, and like, cause the guy was going to Japan for like a year or whatever, and Reggie mm-hmm. was like, "All right, we're gonna make it so that I send you to Japan for a year as punishment for making fun of me or something." Yeah, that something was something like that. Really, really remember. funny. Uh, so he was, yeah, he was, he, he had a pretty good sense of humor about himself. So hey, uh, best of luck, Reggie. The new boss of Nintendo is of uh, Nintendo of America's name is Doug Bowser. <laughs> Just uh, in the in one of his videos, he has Luigi and Mario tied up with an N sixty four controller in the background. Yeah, uh, so he's Bowser. Fucking great. Uh, he's leaning into it. He's leaning into it. He's enjoying that shit. So uh, I yeah. guess uh, we'll see what this new era of NOA's like public face kind of looks like. But uh, hey, best yeah. of luck to Reggie. He did a really good job, kind of holding Nintendo of America together during some of like the roughest times for the company, uh, and mm-hmm. um, everybody is just i guess really satisfied with his run and he left on totally he's just like hey i'm retiring like i want to spend time with my family you know so that's Bye. fucking cool <laughs> um what else have i got to say what other news was pokemon. there Poke- oh yes pokemon okay uh i have a lot to say about this actually um pokemon sword and shield 
Like, Those starters are so good. They're so good. We've had a lot of discussions about this already. Um, I think I have finally chosen my starter. I have finally I'm chosen. With. I'm going to go with Sobel. Yes, me too. And I, I, yeah, I, I think not. he's just... He's a sad lad. He likes to cry. And, uh, I want to hold him. He's cute, and he has hands that are like sausages. So I love him. Yes. Um, he's but, slab squatting. Uh, so yeah, Pokemon Sword and Shield. Um, these are the new Pokemon games. They're coming out on Switch. The whole internet has fucking exploded over them. Rightfully so, because the game looks very impressive. Uh, way more so than they did for Sun or Moon, might I add. Which I was thinking about the other day, and I was like, it's really weird. Like, why? Well, I mean, I, I don't know actually what the reaction was. I can't remember. Oh, to, but... reaction to Sun and Moon was very positive. It's it was huge. Oh yeah, people love Sun. And, people, people really people love Sun fun. and Moon. I just remember people making fun of the fucking Executor uh, Alola. Variant. Yeah, they they memed some of those Alola Pokemon. That's for sure. Uh, but no, people really like Sun and Moon. It it has a good reputation within the series. Uh, both because I guess the, it just didn't touch me. The narrative is actually really, really good, and it's a very kind of intimate story. Uh, but also like yeah. the way that it completely restructures the Pokemon formula was really, really well liked. I enjoyed that personally mm-hmm. because it plays very differently from other Pokemon games. It does not progress. Oh, yeah, it super does. Does not progress at all in a similar fashion. And uh, totem Pokemon are the sick. region is the region is very fun to explore. Like I really, really enjoyed, uh, and it's a hard game too. Uh, Sun and Moon are hard fucking games. They're difficult. Some of those totem Pokemon yeah. are very hard to fight, and those battles are difficult. Uh, so it's it did a lot for people in terms of like completely recontextualizing and restructuring Pokemon's reputation and gameplay. Uh, while keeping kind of the core appeal very much the same. The Alola region is a really nice region to explore. There's a lot of environmental variety. Uh, and there's a couple of missed opportunities within the ser- within those games. But for the most part, I think they're very, very good. If those are going to be the last mm-hmm. handheld Pokemon games, like, in the style of, like, the traditional Pokemon, then fine. <laughs> those are great games to end it on yeah they're like those aren't obviously they're not the last 3d pokemon games but like in the way that like pokemon black and white 2 are kind of like the peak of 2d pokemon and you can't really get better um if these are like the last games and like the the kind of traditional pokemon formula where like they like in terms of its visual design and stuff where it's like you know a top-down kind of thing um then they're great games to end it on because uh, the series has been flirting with three-dimensional visuals, uh, Sun and Moon flirt but with they're those. They're going in now. Yeah, Sun, Sun and Moon flirt flirt with those visuals, black and white, and uh, black two, white two, and also X and Y flirt with those visuals, but for the most part, remain pretty two-dimensional. Uh, this is just totally kicking it up a notch. Mm-hmm. Like it's an over-the-shoulder perspective for what I can tell seems to be a lot of the game. Uh, And that's interesting. Uh, So Sword and Shield are set in the Galar region. Uh, It is based on England and Scotland, so the UK. Um, But I think primarily Scotland and England. Not so much Wales or or Northern Ireland. But um, the region map looks fantastic. Uh, It's it's really beautifully detailed so i've been looking at it a lot and just kind of like analyzing a lot of the content that's on it and i'm seeing like a lot of direct kind of like in all the other regions areas that are like direct parallels to real world locations in england and scotland uh but there's some very very cool looking locations so far i've seen an area that kind of looks like the roman baths in the city of bath uh i've seen like v- multiple castles, farmers' fields. It's a different kind of Pokemon region. It's not as I mean, especially because Alola is so tropical, and uh, it's Kalos is like. It's not that Kalos kind of has an indistinct environment, but they don't really. It, Kalos doesn't really have an identity in terms of its geography. Like it kind of, um. it kind of tries to do everything. And it only does a few of those things really well. This kind of seems like what Kalos should have been. It's a lot more directly European in kind of the variety of environments it presents. 
Uh, like, there's no distracting fucking desert. Absolute fucking desert above what is essentially Paris, which I always thought was a little weird. And um, it kind of suffered for that in terms of its world design. Uh, this looks a lot more like it's sticking to... This is what England is like. We've got misty forests... Uh, farm like large open farmers fields and lush valleys, a lake district, some snow capped kind of mountains, uh, a lot of coastal stuff, uh, a few like and a big big city at the top. Yeah, rock quarries, and then we've got like you said a big huge fucking city at the very top that looks like London, and it's really fucking cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got a big steampunk city that looks a little like Manchester or Edinburgh. Uh, we've got, it, we've got, like, uh, a bunch of cities that are, like, coastal. We've got a city that's got, like, the entirety of Neolithic England just kind of in it. So you have standing stones, fallen Roman ruins and walls, and then you have a big, uh, geoglyph on the ground, uh, of, like, a man, uh, blowing fire. <laughs> it's probably a Pokemon. Um... And you've got, like, painted rock walls and, like, Neolithic cave drawings and shit. We have a mushroom fantasy forest with, like, these little Hansel and Gretel-ass houses in it. Uh, and we've got the city of Bath, like I said, that has, from what I can tell, a big Roman bath in the middle. So there's, like, a lot of variety while also kind of keeping it more in line with, like, what the environments of the actual United Kingdom are like. Uh, and I like that a lot. It's, it's, it's a lot more distinct than Kalos. Uh, mm-hmm. and uh, I'll, it seems like it's a, a, a trying to to do a lot more with less than Kalos, which does a lot less with more. Because Kalos is a very empty region to me. It doesn't have a lot of interesting yeah, stuff in it. That was X and Y's most like suffering thing was just everything felt weird. Yeah, it felt it felt me, weird, yeah. and some of the cities just have like no identity, or they've got too much going on in one area and nothing in anything else. Like, there's that city, yeah. Anastar City, that has that huge sundial thing, and you go and you're like, oh wow, the Anastar sundial! What an impressive instrument that does nothing. Yeah, what a what a fantastic thing that does nothing, or uh, which is why I really liked. Uh, I liked Alola because I feel like everything had a purpose. Like there's, there's, there's an entire town in Alola that has so much lore to it that I'm like, wow, I'm really impressed with the storytelling you did here because it's, uh, it's the town where all the Team Skull people kind of hang out, and it's like an abandoned housing development that they've totally taken over. Uh, and it's like this little, it's like a gated community that they turn into like their stomping grounds. And it's got such, like, a cool environmental design where you have to, like, crawl behind broken fences and over, like, wrecked cars and shit like that that have been, like, just totally bashed to shit with baseball bats. Uh, and there's, like, a, an abandoned Pokemon Center. And, like, it's a really, really cool design. There's an abandoned shopping mall where, like, the ghost characters live that was, like, destroyed in, like, a landslide. So it's, like, half wrecked and all the ghosts fucking hang around there. Uh, mm. There's, like, so much cool environmental shit uh, in that game and then like if you look at x and y there's nothing if you look at black 2 and white 2 it kind of does what x and y does where it's got a little bit of all these different environments but they actually do a whole lot with them as opposed to making them empty as fuck and boring like x and y yeah uh like i always say like until like generation 5 caves sucked like, they were all boring and the same kind of shit. And then Gen 5 has, like, some of the coolest caves in the series. You have a cave with, like, electro, uh, like el- electrified stones, uh, which is oh. really cool. Uh. Like, you have... There's a, there's a great variety of environmental design to the game that makes it a lot more engaging than some of the other uh, designs in the other games. But uh, mm-hmm. that's all to say that uh, Sword and Shield looks like it's going to be, at least in my eyes, a little closer to something like Black 2 and White 2 than it looks like it's going to be to um, X and Y. Also, from what I can also tell... Probably the best Pokemon game in the series. I'm going to put money down now. <laughs> yeah, I, I hope it is. I would love it to be. Um, but I what I really, really, really fucking like uh, is the... Um, just like the general the vibe that it's giving me it feels a little yeah. more lived in 
Mm-hmm. It feels a li- it feels bigger as opposed to just looking bigger. It feels like it's going to be bigger uh, in a way that like none of the other Pokemon games that have that kind of approach to their visual design feel. Um, yeah. And I'm really excited to see where what they do with this game. Like it looks great, and of course the starter Pokemon are fucking great. All three of them are cute and really well designed. Uh, and I'm somebody who likes pretty much every Pokemon design, like. I don't think there are any bad Pokemon. There are some Pokemon that have less great designs, and I think that they the designs very short. the designs I want to say in general do get better as the series progresses. But there's like generations where I'm like I don't really like a lot of the Gen One Pokemon's designs when compared to the rest of the series. Nor do I like a lot of Gen 4's designs when compared to the rest of the series. But I really like Gen 2, Gen 3, Gen 5, and Gen 6 and 7's designs a lot. Yeah. And um, I'm just really excited to kind of see what the Pokemon in this game look like. But it seems like they're really... I don't know, doing a good job at least with the starters so far. Alola didn't introduce a lot of new Pokemon... But I thought that all the Pokemon they introduced were good. So maybe this will be the same thing where not a lot of new Pokemon are introduced, but the ones that are introduced are fucking awesome. And I, I hope that that's the case. Yeah. The starters are straight up adorable. Um, They're the best. Yeah, Scor- They're my favorite starters that have ever been. Scorbunny is a very They're cute fucking rabbit. Gen 1 out of my face. <laughs> like, Scorbunny is a very cute bunny. Yes. Like he's uh, that's a really really great rabbit Pokemon design. It's the best rabbit Pokemon design in all the series. And the series has had a few rabbits, like uh, Nidor- mm-hmm. uh like Nidoran, uh, both female and male, are based on rabbits. Um, yeah, and but not uh, very good ones. They're not very good rabbits. They look more like little monsters, which is fine because they're monsters anyway. They're Pokemon, but they're if they're rabbity looking, they're not super rabbity. Then you have yeah. Um, Baneri, oh, who I think is uh, cute. Whoops, hold on a second. Yeah, Baneri uh, is cute. There we go. Uh, and yeah, Baneri has a good design, but Lopunny, its evolution is like a horrific thing. I don't like looking at it. Uh, Mega Lopunny looks really, really good, but Lopunny, the regular one, is creepy. Uh, and there's also uh Bunnelby. Which is like the rabbit from um, uh, Kalos. And it's okay. Diggersby, its evolution, is really ugly. I hate... I mean, I don't hate it. It's just it's ugly. You know? Well, it doesn't look good to me. uh, In terms of just how some of the other rabbit Pokemon look. But Mm. um, uh, Scorbunny is a very cute rabbit. Uh, it's kind of themed to a soccer player or like a soccer hooligan in that it has like little feet pads on its feet and it's got a little yeah. like bandage on its, it's nose. It's going to be firefighting for sure. I, I, you know what? I disagree. And you know why I, you know why I think it's not going to be firefighting? Cause why? they've made an active effort in the last couple of generations to make firefighting not be a thing anymore. Cause there's a lot of them. But isn't, ah, uh, yeah, I guess. Like, because uh, and here's Litten? my arg- and here's my argument for no Litten is not firefighting; it's fire dark. But uh, not Litten, fucking uh, the 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 final evolution doesn't no, it turn it's into fi- firefighting? It's, no, it's fire really? fire dark. It's not huh. fighting because it's not okay. a rustler; it's a heel rustler. It's an evil rustler, so it's dark. Yeah, type. okay. Um, Fair enough. Like it's a tricky kind of like he fights dirty. Yeah. Um, and then um. The uh, Brakeson, uh, uh, and its evolutions, uh, like the Fennekin line in X and Y, are fire psychic because they're kind of like a mage. Yeah. Uh, but what I think they're gonna do is they're gonna make Grookey grass fighting. Uh, because hmm. there's not a lot of grass fighting Pokemon, although the ones that there are are really really good. And also, um, if you look, it has a stick. I think that stick is going to progress into, like, a branch, and it's going to use it as a sword. Maybe. So that's what I'm thinking. Because I feel like every time <clears throat> they give a Pokemon kind of a tool, the ev- the evolutions elaborate on that tool. And yep. they turn the tool into a part of its kind of thing. And a lot of the Pokemon that use tools are fire f- are, are sorry fighting types. 
so I want to see how that goes. But if that's the case, it'll be really, really cool. Like, I think that's going to be like a sword, you know? Mm-hmm. And then... Uh, I see what you mean. Yeah. yeah. And I'm thinking that um, bu- uh, Score Bunny is actually going to be Fire Electric. Which is a typing that doesn't show up very often, but when it does, it's very good. Like, it's a strong type matchup, and uh, it looks cool. Because there's a I couple... have doubts, but maybe. But I, I think it's going to be very fire electric. It's a soccer player, so it can go either way. But yeah. it's going to be something that kind of emphasizes its physicality and yeah. its ability to go quick. Uh, which yeah. is why I, I think lightning when I think fast. Um, but uh, that's going to be, be really like cool. fire fairy. <laughs> That'll be cool too. I mean, I'm into it. Uh, fairy type is a cool typing. I mean, I really like um, Poplio a lot, and its line yeah. is great. And fucking, I want new Eevees, uh, Eeveelutions. I mean, oh, new Eeveelution would be interesting. Mm-hmm. I'd like to see a Steel type Eeveelution, like oh, with dude, an armor been, kind I've of look. Saying that since fucking Alpha, uh, that, since Sapphire, that would be really, really great steel type Ugh, or a dragon it would type be so cool like if they Fuck. if they could eventually <laughs> bring in an evolution for pretty much every type that'd be neat yeah i want a steel and a ghost evolution those are my yeah. two like those are my fucking mark out types um we're gonna have to cut it there just because my internet's shitting yeah sure bit, thing uh in terms of news but uh yeah there's a, a lot of good shit coming up also, yeah. there was there was more Fallout seventy six news. Oh, uh, God, there's I'll just more Fallout seventy six news. Go I'll just read it. out what the story was. Um, was oh yeah. Oh my God, we didn't cover this. I thought we fucking talked about this. Oh, oh did we? No, I don't. No, I because no, my baby was born. So like, oh yeah. Not. But uh, yeah, go read that. Read that title. <laughs> okay, Fallout seventy six player puts out over, puts in over nine hundred hours into the game, and then. Well, let's just see what Todd Coward did. Uh, he banned him because he had too much ammo. The only person actually enjoying the game was yeah, banned. Yeah, was banned. The game. So, uh... <laughs> but in more video game mishaps, we can also talk about how Anthem is literally destroying PS4s and not working. Um, yeah. It's uh, a bad year for video games, but it is also the it's best a ba- year. It's, it's a ever bad year for triple A shooters. Oh God, yes, yeah. For tri- for or for games that try to turn themselves into games as a service. Trend following. Yeah. Games, a- I guess. Any any game that attempts to follow a trend, with the exception of Apex Legends, so yeah, far Apex is doing has, it right now. has been just a fucking disaster on all accounts. So maybe don't try and trend follow. Just maybe don't fucking do that. It's not a good idea. <laughs> um, oh, and I, 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 do, I just want to say I played um, uh, Damon X Machina. Oh, yes. How is that? Uh, on, let me just say, on handheld, it looks like shit. Well, uh, yeah. But playing it on the TV, it is one of the most beautiful games I have ever seen in my life, and it's a day one purchase for me. It is stylized uh, as fuck. The controls are fucking great. The kind of story stuff they have going on in it right now is interesting. And it's just enough to get me kind of engaged in it. And like yeah. I said, the gameplay is fucking awesome. I got a pro controller recently. And playing it with the pro controller is like, this is fucking great. I really... En- and I don't like system-heavy, like, control-heavy games where, like, every button does, like, five things. But they've done a really great job mapping the controls of this game out onto this, and it's really fucking good. I'm excited. Sick. So, I'm fucking Uh, hyped. Um, I'm fucking hyped to get a Switch, because that's going to be my birthday present. Oh, yeah. Platinum, here I come. So, Um, this is going to be fucking great. Yeah, that's Uh, pretty much it. Yeah, I think that'll be it for now. But, uh, fuck fuck yes to everything uh, going on in games that's not like shitty or bad right now and uh new pokemon game yeah, looks at least, at least you can see the garbage from like a mile away and mm-hmm. call it even before it's released yeah which is really like, really I, nice I, I was like anthem's gonna fucking suck anthem's not gonna be fun it's not gonna be good and then it wasn't there's a bug in that game they fixed it uh but there was a bug that like you could get legendary tier loot that would do zero damage with a zero uh buffer effect so it would just 
not do any damage at all because it's RNG. And they just didn't set the value to not Amazing. have a lower cap. I know, right? I... How do you fuck how... up? How do you fuck up like that? You know how you fuck up like that? It's because <laughs> EA is using the Frostbite engine, which is also the Andromeda engine. An engine oh. built for Battlefield uh, and, like, mm. Battlefront. So it's it's a it's an online multiplayer first person shooter engine. It is not an engine made for the kind of games that Bioware makes. Yet they are using it, and that's why everything is shitting so hard. Um, the value thing, maybe not, but definitely that's why there's so many bugs. That's why Andromeda sucked. That's why this sucks. Um, oh yeah. my god! Why? I know. <laughs> why? 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 Well, I gotta go take care of <laughs> why, the baby. Why are they so fucking stupid? Uh, but they keep giving us fun stories, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh yeah, all right, I guess I that's it for now. I gotta go take care of a baby. Yeah, I gotta go take care of the baby. Yeah, you go I take care of the baby. <laughs> uh, the baby. And, uh, uh, yeah, thanks for, thanks for listening. Um, uh, this will be the status quo for the next couple of weeks, I think. Uh, just kind of pre-recorded yeah. episodes. We're gonna have a couple more bonus rounds coming too, because we're definitely gonna need to record a few of those to to fill time. Uh, but uh, thank you guys for listening. Of course, always you can you know follow our Discord, uh, follow us on Twitch. Uh, you can follow us on YouTube. We have a playlist of all of these available to listen to there, and MP3s will be available uh, in the mega folder. So, uh, thank you so much, and uh, we hope you guys have a nice uh, afternoon. Or whenever it good is you're day. listening. Yeah. <laughs> have a good <laughs> I guess that is time. Actually, whatever time it is now, I yeah. hope it's a good one. It is like literally noon now that we're recording this, so there we go. That's why I said afternoon. Everybody, uh, <laughs> have yourselves a good time.